All right, team, charge! This is unbelievable. Hey, you know something? I'm going to tell you something. This is what it's all about. We eat fishy. Look at the mouth on it. <laughs> Larry Smith Outdoors is brought to you in part by the Badger Sportsman Magazine, Big Snow Resort featuring Blackjack and Indian Head, Hard and Soft Fishing, Bartline Barrels, and Deep Freeze Ice Fishing. And remember, it's a great day to be alive. Hey, this week we're gonna do a little bit something different. We're gonna head back out to the Dakotas and we're going to South Dakota this time. We're gonna do an all-nighter, which I love to do. We're gonna, it's about 10 o'clock right now. We're gonna run all night. We're gonna meet our good friend, Ben Ekram, out at Sioux Falls and we're gonna head out a little bit west of there and do some fishing. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna go to the Dakota Anglers Ice Institute and we're gonna do a little bit of a seminar on Saturday night and come back home. So, hey, stay tuned and see what happens on Larry Smith Outdoors, South Dakota bound, here we go. You know what, I always say this, I'll sleep when I die. Badger Sportsman Magazine, the premier outdoor magazine. Published in Oshkosh and written by Wisconsin sportsmen for Wisconsin sportsmen. Get the most out of your time in the woods or on the water. Subscribe to Badger Sportsman Magazine today. And the magazine makes a great gift idea. Go to Badger Sportsman Magazine slash holiday special and save while you give this great gift. Get two years for $20 or three years for $30. Just enter promo code JOLLY15. Save on Badger Sportsman Magazine today. The new Beaver Dam Titanium Tip Stick is the first ice rod with a built-in extendable titanium spring bobber, making it the most versatile ice rod ever. Extend the bobber for ultralight panfish jigging or retract it for game fish or when it's time for travel. It even has a built-in rattling handle to attract fish. It took a while to come up with an ice rod worthy of the Beaver Dam name, but when we did, boy, we nailed it. That's no little perch this time. Come on, Josh. We're counting on you. That's got, that's definitely got some weight to it. All right. Could be our first South Dakota walleye of the day here. Come on. Boy. This could be nice fish, real nice. Oh, that's a damn. Oh, nice job, Josh. Woo, that's nice job, buddy. Hold that fish up. Look at that, that's a pig. Wow. Hey, I don't know, Ben, so much for going to that seminar early today or going to the sports show. That is a great fish. Wow, nice job, Jack. Hey, wow. you know what? I don't mind giving a guy a buck for that fish any day. First wall, I've caught a bunch of perch already, but that's definitely the first wally. That is a dandy of a fish. Now wow. we're not going anywhere, boys. Nice job, Josh. Nice job. <laughs> I got one finally. Oh, here we go. You know something? I can't believe I come all the way out to South Dakota, you guys, and I left home. We were catching these things by the Grove, and what do I, I didn't even know you guys even had white bass here. <laughs> hey, you know something? I can, if you guys don't mind, I, next time I come, I can bring you a whole live well full of sheephead. <laughs> a white bass. Where's the South Dakota big walleye like Josh got? That's what I'm looking for. That's a walleye. You are the walleye king today. <laughs> you went from one extreme to the other. <laughs> you got a perch or a walleye? Oh yeah, a wee eye. You know, we catch a lot of them on Lake Winnebago. And I'm gonna tell you, we're still not going until I catch a walleye, I'll tell you that. It gets awful cold around midnight, you know that. 
Ooh, white bass. Oh, oh, hey, that's what, God, no, you stole my thunder on that. I was the white bass pro until just a little while ago. Right, yeah, you stick to the walleyes. Here we go, got the old Kalens. What do I got now? Oh, now that's a little bit better. Hey, you guys, I'm telling you, we're out in South Dakota this week. Last week, we were out in North Dakota doing some hunting. This week, we left the guns at home, and we're out in South Dakota. And uh, we're not going in until I catch a walleye, you guys. I'm getting closer, a little bit better perch right there. But, you know, it's amazing all the water out here. Um, it's a, just an absolutely tremendous fishery. But uh, the problem is, boy, we had a big front that came through a day ago, and the fishing really slowed down out here. But, you know, that's the way fishing is, you know. That's why I always say this. That's why I never get bored with fishing because every day is different. You know, I very seldom do you have two days in a row that are exactly the same. So, and you know, my theory is just keep fishing, keep trying and trying. So, hey, after seeing Josh catch that huge walleye, I want to catch one of them big South Dakota walleyes too. Oh, 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 oh we're going the wrong us. direction, Josh. <laughs> what the heck? Wow. 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 They come bite size. <laughs> What do you got? Oh, yeah. oh got a crappie. crappie! Hey, hey, crappie time! Not too bad a crappie. Hey, another species for the day. Yeah. Gotta love that. Oh, another crappie! Josh! I didn't know <laughs> Crappie! Well, that's a little bit better crappie. Benny, he's up on you on size of crappies, too. This guy has got the hot hand today for sure. You know, I've taught this kid everything he knows about <laughs> You know, sure I was a little surprised before that he said you were his number two oh, yeah. uncle. If you taught him everything he knows, you should be number one. Well, you'd think he would admit that. Right. <laughs> something that works. I think you got something that's nettable. Ooh, is, is that going to be a green one? Like you were talking about pike before. Is either that or a really nice walleye. Now, who would call me? Who would call me? You're right during a, a crucial time like this. How dare they? Must be an anti-fisherman. Oh, a muskie. It's a muskie. It is a muskie. Yes, it's a muskie. Yeah, muskie. Get him in the head. Nice, be pretty fish. No, 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 no. Come back. Yes. Hey, you know, if you're gonna start fishing muskies, you're gonna have to get a little bit bigger nut, okay? There you go, my friend. Fat fish. Hold that one up. You're Mr. Multi-Species today. I certainly am, sir. Gotta love it. Got something going. You know what? I was just going to say, let's pull the plug. And, oh, ho, ho, yeah, baby. Look at that. Now, you know what? Woo, Ben, you already had pulled your line in because we're late for the show. And I said, you know what? Josh said five more minutes, and I'm like, I hated to leave South Dakota coming all the way here. We actually came out here to do the show, but we figured th uh, that Josh was nice enough and Ben was nice enough to take us fishing today. I hated to leave South Dakota with only catching a 10-inch walleye, and I was like the last couple seconds, and look at this. You know what? It's not a 28, 29 inch like Josh's, but you know what? At least I leave with catching a respectable walleye in South Dakota. What an absolutely, you know what? I always say this, that there's a lot more to fishing than catching fish. You know what? Fishing's all about spending time with good people. And you know what? I would say 99% of the people that fish are good people. And you know what? We had a very enjoyable day today, you guys. I thank you very much for having us come out and fish. And you know what, what a great way to end the day. Hey, for Larry Smith Outdoors, remember, it's always a good day to be alive.
with ice fishing just around the corner, it's time to gear up. Check out the new Pro Skimmer by Deep Freeze. Offered in 6-inch, 8-inch, and 10-inch models. The fastest ice skimmer on the market. And once you're ready for those tip-ups, don't forget about Blue Tips. The first tip-up alert system sent straight to your smartphone. Free app available on Android and iOS. Check out these and other products at deepfreezefishing.com or any of your favorite retailers. Badger Sportsman Magazine, the premier outdoor magazine. Published in Oshkosh and written by Wisconsin sportsmen for Wisconsin sportsmen. Get the most out of your time in the woods or on the water. Subscribe to Badger Sportsman Magazine today. And the magazine makes a great gift idea. Go to Badger Sportsman Magazine slash holiday special and save while you give this great gift. Get two years for $20 or three years for $30. Just enter promo code JOLLY15. Save on Badger Sportsman Magazine today. Hey, this week on Larry Smith Outdoors, we're up in South Dakota at Sioux Falls and we're here at the Ice Institute. Hey, hey, Brad, how's it going today? Good, You very got good. some very unique products and you know what? We're always looking to improve what we're doing, uh, especially when it comes to ice fishing. And why don't you tell us a little bit about your company and the things that you provide? Sure, sure. So Deep Breeze is out of Eagle River, Wisconsin. Um, we started the company about four years ago. Right now we offer two main products. Blue Tips would be the first one we'll talk okay. about today. Um, Blue Tips is a tip-up alert that gets sent to your smartphone. So we have a free mobile app for Android and iOS. You would simply clip the transmitter to your existing tip-up. Okay. Flag goes up, and then we can see that your phone gets alarmed. Now, typically all the phones coming out now would be compatible with Blue Tips. If you don't have the compatible phone, what we okay. could do is sell you the receiver. So when this goes up, this would beep and blink. Okay. Let's see what else you got over sure. here. So here we have the one shot skimmer. This was actually the first product that we came out with. Okay. Um, this here is the eight inch model. So what you do is you stick it down sideways through the slush, you turn it back, and then you can simply pick it up and you clear all the slush out of the hole. In, in one, one shot, huh? One that is absolutely, you know, that's very, very cool for sure. Especially a guy like us, you know what? You know, with our guiding business, we have one of the largest ice guiding businesses in the state of Wisconsin, and we really take a lot of pride in being mobile and moving, getting our guys set back up fast. And boy, I'll tell you, you know, I don't know what this year is gonna come as far as the amount of ice, but the last couple of years, we've had a lot of ice. Yes. And so being able to just hit that hole one time and pull all the slush out and keep moving, that's that's a cool yep. deal. Hey, thanks, Brad, appreciate Thank it. Hey, Dan. You know what? I know that you've always got a lot of really cool products. And you know, you got a couple of minutes to kind of tell us about what you have? Sure, okay. sure. Basically, um, the flagship product of the company is the Snap-on Blade Protector. So that is really uh, what launched the whole company. You're able to put on your blade without having to take your gloves off and deal with that strap or cord that always breaks. Um, all our stuff comes with a lifetime guarantee. So if you ever have a problem with it, we'll replace it, no questions asked but it's really as simple to put on a blade cover is you can take it off with the side of your foot, you lift it out, and it drops right straight back in like that. So that's all it takes to put on a, a blade cover. When you're fishing with your kids or a pet or a dog or something on the ice, um, always make sure you have your blades covered. Cost of the blades and everything, it's way cheaper to have a good cover on your uh, auger than to have to pay for new blades or have them sharp. And safety. Exactly. Big time, A lot yeah. of people have cut their they're sitting themselves or wreck their equipment by having those blades not covered. And there's nothing worse when you leave home and you got that auger in the back of your truck and it slides around and you get to the lake and the, and the blades are all beat up and they don't cut. Exactly. Right. It so, could yeah, ruin that's... a good day in the ice and your time on the ice is important. You, you don't get that many days. So right. you make sure you maximize your time. Hey, now we're talking with Kevin from Hardened Softwater Fishing. And Kevin, you know what? It seems like we certainly have a lot of new products. And you got some stuff that you want to show us? I mean, you know when it comes to fishing, little things make a big difference. And mm -hmm. I learned something from you just a couple minutes ago when I was over here. This is one of our newer things. We've been actually messing around them for the last three years almost. This is called a two-inch panfish meat leech. It's from Uncle Josh, pork product. It's made out of 100% pork. And this is the really neat thing about it. It has this action that looks almost more lifelike than live bait. You can see it barely moving it, that how it is, moves. That is awesome. Holy cats. 
And trust me, fish cannot resist that action. Here's some of the new rods from Beaver Dam. This one's called a tip stick. We're really excited about this one. This is a 29 inch model. It's got a, it, there's a 26 inch model and a 29 inch model. The longer rod has a little denser piece of titanium than the 20, yeah, I hate one to do that. 23 inch model. Um, so this is more of a tungsten, more of a smaller panfish bait rod. This spring is gonna be better suited to spoon action. Um, there's a Acme Castmaster tied on this right now. That's a good pair. About a 1 8th Castmaster is about what you want on this spring. The neat thing about it is if you're fishing a spoon and it's a subtle bite, you can use a spring. You want to switch to a, a bait like a Rapala, you want to start ripping a bigger spoon for getting, walleyes getting real aggressive later in the day, yep. then you can make it into a, a normal rod and just hit the bite with a feel. You can use a more aggressive action without that spring on there. It's not going to deaden the action of your spoon or whatever jigging bait you may be using. Again, pull out the spring, subtle bite, Bad you're spring. back at it. You can fish two different things the same rod, two totally different things, which is new, fairly new. Yes, it is, yep. Hey, we're talking with Todd from Dakota Anglers. Hey, you know, this event you have every year is really a cool situation here. What a great way to come out and see what the new products are, see what the prices are on things, and just the seminar people that you have here too, a great way to come out and learn a lot of things. What, what else can you tell me about this event, and how long have you had this? Well, you know, first off, thanks for coming to yourself. No, thanks I mean, for having you know, me. It's, uh, it's just great to have you to, to be a part of the Institute, and uh, we've been doing this now for seven years here in Sioux Falls. Okay. And and uh, really, you know, a lot of people say, well, how's this structured towards any other show? And in, I d haven't structured it towards any other show. It's unique, the fact that we have a seminar room where people learn how to use the equipment that they can come in here to buy. Right. And then interact with the people and ask the questions that they need to ask and uh, walk out a happy and satisfied customer. You know, and I think the biggest thing, I always say this, you're talking to a guy like me that is very lucky and I've been able to fish pretty much every day. And you, you, the thing I always say about fishing is that you're constantly always learning. So any time that you can come into a place like this and learn about what the sport that you love the most, it's, it's just a great opportunity to take advantage of. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I've mentioned all along that uh, this is a place for the novice angler and also the most experienced angler. Everyone can learn from each other. Uh, we all have stories to tell and there's well, nothing. Lots of stories. Yeah, and <laughs> some good, some not so good, <laughs> right. you know, but uh, still there's good. stories. But uh, that's where we sit there and we learn from each other. And, and really, uh, it's a great way to kick off the ice fishing season. I would agree 100%. Hey, I'm geared up and I can't wait to get on some hard water. And I think there's a lot of people that are feeling the same way as you, and that's where you see the excitement of people really looking forward to the ice season. We continue to see this sport grow and grow every year, right. and it's really due to the influence that uh, we have with TV shows, internet shows like yourself. All this stuff is just great uh, advertising, great uh, fuel to get that, those uh, ice fishing energies and ice fishing uh, thoughts and I'll also open up the pocketbook a little bit right. and buy a little bit more equipment. Right. You can never have enough equipment. Exactly. I'm just going to tell you that. So, hey, great, Todd. I appreciate that. Thank hey, you. Not Big a problem. Time. Thanks for being here. Yep, thanks. Hey, for Larry Smith Outdoors, enjoy. If you want a tip-up that lasts, nothing beats a beaver dam. With over 50 years of American craftsmanship in every one. From our classic tip-up to round models to the new beaver bucket station or bracket. We're your partner on the ice that's never had a meltdown, even if your buddies do. Oh, look at that fish! Oh my gosh! Holy Take cow, Take him, yours, baby. Look at that. This week on Larry Smith Outdoors, we're up on Castle Rock Lake, and I'll tell you, we absolutely 
picked a great day. We're into November now and it's rare to get a day where the sun is shining, which is very important when you're fishing a body water like this, that's steam. And we got light winds, which is again, definitely very important because we're gonna be working a lot of structure out here. And we're gonna be fishing anywhere from eight down to about 20 feet of water in a lot of these really tight breaks. And when you look at like a Lake Master chip on this body of water, the main things that you're fishing here are gonna be the main river channel and the secondary channels. And you're always looking for them little nooks and crannies and you're looking for timber. These fish like to relate to the drop-offs and any place that has some timbers. Hey, and another great thing today, we've got the Durban boys fishing with us today. We've got three generations here and we got Hunter, right? We've got Dan and we've got Phil, right? So three generations and Phil's got a place down in Florida. So his blood is a little bit thin. So he, I bet you you're appreciative today that it's not real cold too, right? No, this is, oh, that's right. This is cold. <laughs> it could be a lot worse. Hey, stay tuned and let's see what happens today. We're gonna to be multi-species fishing today. So we'll see what happens. I'm hoping we're gonna catch a couple of big walleyes here, some crappies and maybe a perch or a pike or two. So let's see what happens. Hey, hey, finally. Got a fish here, let me see. I know it's nothing real big, probably small walleye or, yep. First fish of the day, and I'll tell you, you guys, you know, it has been very slow so far. You know, one thing nice about these flowages when you're fishing up here, Castle Rock, Pete, well, any part of this Wisconsin river system is that sunny days are the best, and the best bite to me has always been from like nine to four. That's usually, you know, the best time frame, and I'll take that sun anytime, mainly because in the fall, you know, you want the sun to heat up that water temperature a little bit, but the sun in that, that stained system like this one, it seems to get these fish motivated and active versus when it's real cloudy and low pressure. You know, a lot of bodies of water, high pressure is not the best fishing, but when you're looking at these with flowages like this Castle Rock and Pete and well, high pressure is definitely better fishing. I've always had more success under high pressure conditions. So we'll let this little guy go and see what happens. Oh, ah, Phil! Ah, small. Little for the small. Day, I got the prize. Yep, at least it's a start. You had to be a good fisherman to catch a fish that small. Yeah, <laughs> that's how it goes. Big ones. I'm can not gonna eat argue it. with you. Come on, Dan. Let's see what you got. Well, that's probably the biggest one today so far. Hundred body. <laughs> oh, you see that? I can't believe that. My rod! That was my favorite rod. There you go. Good job, Hunter. Come on, Dan. Let's see illegal fish for once. There you go. There's illegal. All right. That's the last time I give you a hard time again about old white lightning. <laughs> you know, when he pulled this rod out of the truck this morning, and I start giving him a hard time. That might make it for a keeper if you want to keep one to eat. But uh, you know, you've got the hot hand here. I'll tell you that. Got the, hot rod. Got the that's what it is, it's huh? Fancy it's a little you. fancy for me. Oh, look at that! You know what they call this? This is called a Durban Special. We had to run the guys in because Hunter had some homework he had to finish up on and we didn't want to get his mom mad at him for not having time to get his homework done to go to school tomorrow. So we're going to run back out and see if we can finish this show off by catching some more fish. Let's see what happens. I got one, here we go. Oh my gosh, yeah, this, we just came back out, I'll tell you what, this is a big fish, and I, I'm out, almost out of minnows, so I put on one of the kalins back on there, and I don't, it might be a catfish, I'm not sure, it's kinda, I can feel it spinning a little bit. Not quite sure, boy, it's a nice heavy fish. Ooh, good fighter, oh, oh my, it is, it's a walleye. It's a walleye, what's a walleye, it's a walleye. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a catfish. Look at that big fat pig. 
Oh, 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 yeah. Look at that. Look at the size of that wallet. And I just lost one about five minutes before that that I knew was a walleye for sure. I honestly thought that was gonna be a catfish on there. You know, that's about a 28, 29, maybe a 30 incher, but that is an absolutely awesome fish. And I'll tell you, I've been saying this for a long time, you know, these bodies of water have a 15 to 20 inch size limit or one over 28 inches. So what it happens is it gives these fish a chance to grow up and get to be big monster fish like this. Ready to go, little girl? A big girl? out of here back down you know the key to this whole thing here is and I was talking a little bit about it earlier is to basically find the main river channel find any little cups that are in the channel you'll see where the timber is you'll mark it on your hummingbird and then go up above it if the and above the wind you know to get up on the windward side of it and start drifting back and pitching that plastic and snapping it, letting it fall, snapping it, letting it fall, snapping it, letting it fall. And as soon as you see that line tighten up or feel anything, set the hook automatically because it's more of a reactionary bite. I cannot believe that I didn't spend more time on these plastics before. Again, with a couple years ago, I filmed that show with my good friend John Gillespie. This is another big fish, I can tell. And uh, he just absolutely started smacking them big fish on there. And it's a good thing we were, oh, there he is, oh, oh nice fish, nice fish, nice fish. Oh, oh, look at the size, look at the size of that fish. Oh, it's another good one. Oh, oh, oh. It's a little, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, girl. We just want to get a little picture of you. Oh, yeah, baby. You know, I'll tell you something, I got another big fish, not quite as big as the last one. This one's about 27 inches, but you know, this kind of reminds me, and I should know better, because a couple of years ago, I was out here with my good buddy, John Gillespie, and I think we caught either a nine or 11 big walleyes like this. And it was him, he's the one that started taking the plastics, and we were pulling live bait before, and uh, John started throwing the plastics up on these humps right here and start crushing these big fish. And, you know, of course, that's what we did. We went to, we went to everybody went to casting plastics. But I'll tell you, honestly, I was doing plastics before. I did it for about an hour. I never had a bite, and I kind of gave up on it. But we took the Durbins back in, and we ran out of, basically, out of minnows. We were catching so many small walleyes up by the trussle up there. And so that's all we had left were the jerk minnows. And I'll tell you, I'm sure glad that the Durbins and I burned up all the minnows because ever since we came back out here, now this is the second big walleye we've caught, and I just lost another one before. And, you know, I'll tell you, confidence, I guess I got to put more confidence back in the, the Kalins for sure. But look at that fish. That's another dandy. It's a great day to be alive and a great night to be alive. You know, a funny deal this morning is that I was in such a hurry when I left the landing and I did the same exact thing about a month ago is that I left my transom saver still on the boat right there. I heard a little clip before <laughs> and there it is. A little bit of super glue and a little bit of duct tape and she'll be fine again. What is that, fudge? Brownie, why you want one? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs>